want to show you guys how to create this cool cutout blended video effect where we're going to combine two videos using After Effects and Premiere. Hey everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and I'm excited to share with you my thoughts on the AMD AI processor and teach you some cool effects I made with it. So I've got the laptop fresh out of the box and I've installed the apps I usually use, which is Adobe Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop. For this main effect, where we're really gonna use some nice building blocks is I'm going to take one clip and use rotoscoping in After Effects to combine it with another clip in a cool way. So I'm gonna right click and replace with After Effects composition. And this is gonna open Adobe After Effects. And already, once you start doing stuff like this, if you're not working on a good processor or chip, you might start to get all sorts of lag. So we've got our clip open in a smooth way. And then if I click the Roto Brush tool and double click our layer, here's where we can actually add a selection for After Effects to start working with. So if I hold Alt on the keyboard, I can actually tell After Effects what not to select. That's the red lines and then the green, I can tell it what to select. So we'll even get to this soccer ball or football. And if I press freeze here, this is called the roto brush and it's going to freeze these frames or rotoscope through them. And depending on your clip, you should get a pretty smooth selection frame by frame so that you don't have to do this by hand. So once my composition is done freezing all the frames, I can just save this project that we made and the linked project in Premiere will reflect those changes that we did in After Effects. And now we have our cutout image, which is a building block for all kinds of cool effects, whether you're putting text in between subjects or videos. But in this case, I wanted to create a cool blending effect of two different clips. So behind this clip, I can drag a new clip and this is gonna be an up close of a goal post. But the key to this whole effect that I thought would look really cool is a little blend effect. So I'm gonna take my cutout clip and put it on track three on top. I'm gonna to take the original clip and put that on track two. And then I'm gonna take the goal post clip that's behind and put them together. And on the original middle clip, I'm just going to create a faded blend. So I'm almost like a barber here. I'm just gonna fade these two clips together with the cutout on top. So I'm just creating a mask on the opacity of this middle clip, and I'll just increase the mask feather quite a bit to get that fade, and I can drag it down or up depending on where exactly I want the fade to start. I can even be a little bit more diagonal. And if I play this back, which I love the smooth playback I'm getting a lot of times in the uh, linked After Effects composition, you don't get smooth playback anymore after you do that. Premiere is saying that this might need buffering with the red bar, but it's playing back perfectly smooth to me. This was my idea for this effect. I actually think it looks really cool. This blended and faded, but still cut out clip. See, if we didn't have the cutout clip, you'd lose that whole part of the effect. It would just be a regular 50-50 blend. But bringing that subject into cutout, I think really elevates this into being a unique effect. So one of the things I appreciate about having this more powerful AMD chip is the ability to get smooth playback, even when there's effects on a clip or even when there's something processing in the background. So for example, if I go to the effects panel and find the warp stabilizer and add that on there, it's not like it's gonna do it instantly or something, but while it is analyzing in the background, I can still get smooth playback on the other clips, and I can even still add effects onto the other clips. So another cool thing I was uh, messing with is the wave warp effect, and not only doing it just with the wave warp, but also adding a mask on that effect so that we only get this distorted first person vision outside of the focus of the subject. So this was just a cool sensory effect idea I had. And if you notice, I can do all of this well, that stabilization is still processing on this other clip in the background. So it's almost as if it's, it's not instant, but uh, we can continue working as if it's done. So 
we see here it is finished now 100 percent and we get this cool warp stabilized clip a lot less motion we can tweak it in here but that's just a really useful effect to have in general another cool one in the distort folder actually is the lens distortion effect technically this can fix distortions in your lens if you're using a fisheye or something but we can also use it to create distortions in the lens giving it another cool first person vision effect so those are just some different kind of workflows and effects that i'm often sharing how to do and how to build effects from and i'm enjoying how smooth they are as a video editor we can really burn through all kinds of processing power and specs so any increase in the chip or increase in the specs is always going to be helpful in your workflows whether you're just doing simple playback and edits or you're adding more intense effects my name is justin odisho thank you so much for watching thank you amd for sponsoring this video i'll see you next time